Hello, and welcome to another episode of For the Love of Sports. My name is Michael Raziel. This is the show where we get to talk about sports. We get to talk about business. We get to talk about everything in between. Wherever you're listening, however you're listening, you know exactly what to do. Like and subscribe on YouTube. Please, five-star review on Spotify. Please, five-star review and say something really nice about me and my incredible guest over on Apple. Today, I have Malcolm Lemons. He's the founder of The Hype Report, former professional basketball player, and most importantly, three-time reoccurring guest on the For the Love of Sports podcast. Malcolm, how you doing, man? Fantastic, Mike Menace. It's a pleasure to be here. Third time's a charm, but hopefully we get to do this more often. <laughs> I'm, I'm saying, man, I'm reading the newsletter you got going. I might ask you to come on monthly so we can re re recap some of these projects, some of the stuff that's going on in the space. But we'll get to the hype report in a bit. Malcolm, you've been on the show a couple times now. Man, you know the first question, but I got to ask it. Maybe things change. People change the new year. New me, right? 2023, Malcolm. That's what they say. <laughs> why do you love sports so much, man? Man, sports is a unifier. Um, I, and I look back on my athletic career, I got to, to really build, grow, work towards a common goal with people from different backgrounds, ethnicities, races, religions. Um, and that is the thing. It brings us together. Um, and so that's the primary reason why I love sports. And I think that's why a lot of people, a lot of other people love it. It's really that camaraderie, that tribalism um, and how it groups us together despite where we come from or you know what we do in life. It is such an easy, uh, easy way to get together with people because you'll talk to someone who, uh, for lack of a better term, is a let's just say a little racist, right? But then they meet somebody who likes the same team as them, and ah, uh, you know, color doesn't mean as much on Saturdays or Sundays, right? It's a lot easier to kind of get past some of the stuff. It's always like, why don't you act like this all the time? I'm not trying to get into that part of the conversation, but it's always very interesting where the the fandom unites people, and then once sometimes when that fandom turns off, it. it ununites people right i don't know what the hell right. uh, divides people thank you um yeah. but even like even those types of people can be united for a small second a small amount of time right great movie remember the titans yeah i don't know 100%. that's pretty yeah. right like that, that's like a Perfect really example. great example of what i'm trying to say without sounding stupid right it's we hate each other until it's like actually we have the same common goal we're trying to do the same thing and the center's around football and who the hell doesn't love football especially after these last couple weekends that we've had of uh, the nfl and, and college bowls but uh, i couldn't agree with you more man i don't know if that was your answer the last couple times i'll go back and re-listen those episodes <laughs> but i would not be surprised because i get that answer a lot and it's it's so true man and uh, i think it's you know it one thing about sports, right, it allows me to talk to people like you. It allows me to talk to some people, absolutely incredible people like you and, and just all the guests that I've had the opportunity to speak with. And I said, like, you're the – this is the third time you've been on the show. An interesting piece of that is this is the third time you're on the show, and we're actually talking about three different topics, right? First time we mostly centered around your, your pro basketball career and what you were doing. The second time you had a couple businesses that you were working on, and this is – a new business that you're working on, The Hype Report. And we're gonna get into that in a second. I'm really excited on what you're doing in the Web3 space and combining that with sports and the newsletter that you have. People will go sign up to, the link's gonna be in the description. But one thing that parallels us then brings us together a little bit is kind of that, almost like a trial and error when it comes to our careers, when it comes to what we're trying to do, right? Like I started in finance, then I got into digital advertising, then I started working with athletes on, on sponsorship opportunity, and now I'm working in marketing at a sports betting company, right? I'm 31 years old, I have four or five different careers already. Most people have two tops their entire life. Uh, and I think it's interesting that you parallel that with me. So I'm just kind of curious, like where, where does that um, nature come from? Where does that thirst of always just trying to find what you're meant to be doing and, and okay with trial and error and, and finding new things and new opportunities that come your way. Yeah, absolutely, man. I think first and foremost, um, I, I kind of view life as a series of experiments. Um, and so despite, you know, what you're interested in or uh, any type of idea, anything you're passionate about, I'm all about kind of diving in head first and giving it a try before, you, you know, you, you kind of strategize. I, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm always about like, putting myself in the arena, seeing if this is something that even I can take long term or, you know, kind of re really just, you know, jumping in and, and not really trying to go through the phase of like, well, you know, putting together a business plan or putting together this or that and just thinking about it, I'm, I'm gonna dive right in head first. And so I think that uh, by doing that, and, and, and even before that, having a willingness to fail at that thing, I think is really important. Um, you know, looking back at like my childhood, I was, I, I always kind of had that entrepreneurial drive and I was the kid, you know, and I, I feel like I've said this in previous podcasts, like I was the kid selling candy, 
Um, I was flipping shoes in high school. I was t selling t-shirts. I had all different types of hustles. And it was just the thrill of starting new things, having this idea and putting it out into the world, getting feedback. And if it didn't work for me, throw it to the side. And so I, I just view life that way as like, we only get one shot at this thing, you know? And why not, if, you know, if you have an idea or, or something that you're interested in or passionate about, why not just put it out there, get that feedback. If it doesn't work, you can always, you know, dive into something else. Um, and if you do find that thing that you want to do long term, you know, you can you can go ahead and do that the rest of your life. But you're not going to figure that out unless you try many different things, figure out what your strengths are, figure out, you know, if, if this is something you're you're actually passionate about and just pursuing it. So um, I'm all about getting getting my hands dirty, uh, so to speak, and just diving into any idea or any business um, that comes to mind. And that's how I've always uh, kind of lived my life and, and kind of my business career. Yeah, and I think it's it's way more fun that way too, right? Like if, if you were just uh, headstrong and stubborn, been like, well, this was my first business idea. And yeah, it's kind of making money, but you don't love it, but it's kind of making money. So you keep going with it because, hey, no, this was my business idea. I have to do it. That's just kind of dumb at that point, right? Like why would you put the, why would you put yourself through that? This is your business. This is your life. As you said, you get one shot at this. Why would you spend it doing something that you do not enjoy? Um, that, again, for me, that was finance. I absolutely hated finance. Was I making good money at 23? Absolutely. It was awesome. But every day I woke up literally dreading that day. It's like... Mm -hmm. Why, why am I doing this? This is insane. I'm too young to hate the rest of my life, right? Like, I don't care how much money you have. And I'm kind of curious, what did you, what have you learned about yourself through all this, right? A couple different businesses, a couple different, like kind of, you know, you had the media company, you had some watches, you, you know, you did hiring a little bit. And, and I apologize if I'm not 100% up to date on every single thing, but like, those are some of the things and you're looking at different industries, you're looking at different people, you're different places and, and your network is pretty incredible because I've seen you on LinkedIn and what you do. But what, what have you kind of learned about yourself through the starting, and I guess we can say ending, and we're not saying failure, right? Failures, no such thing as failure. There's only lessons to be learned. What, what can you say about starting and ending some of these businesses, the things that you learned about yourself, the things that you learned about these industries that you're able to then pull through to the next project you're working on? Yeah, absolutely. I think by trying multiple different things and then just like looking at the pandemic, all of us had so much time on our hands and it was kind of how I was able to start these these multiple projects and in different spaces and, and kind of try my hand at different lanes. Um, and I think the biggest thing I kind of learned was what my actual strengths were and what I love to do, kind of going back to what I said before. And <clears throat> everything that you do in life builds on top of the other thing that you did or like the previous things that you've done. So like, for example, like starting the watch company, I learned how to build an e-commerce site. I learned how to run Facebook ads. So I'm able to leverage some of those skills that I learned into what I'm doing now. But also I learned that I didn't want to have a physical product business because it's very cost intensive. Um, even with the hiring company, the, the, the recruiting company I started, I ran that for about nine months. And I, and I learned that um, I learned how to sell. B2B sales is very challenging. It's something I had never done before, but I learned some of those skills that now apply to what I'm doing as well. Um, but in the same vein, I learned that I didn't want to be in client services or, or you know, kind of have to make the sales calls every single day. So you learn all these different strengths that kind of build on top of one another and that you're able to leverage in other things that you do. But you also learn what you don't like, what you don't want to do long term. And I think that's even more important when you think about a long term career or a long term business that you do want to run. It's it's really analyzing what are the things that you're that you're that you're naturally good at that you see yourself doing every single day. Um, and pursuing those things as opposed to some of the other details of running a business or some of the other, um, I guess, business models that you don't really want to pursue long term. And so those are kind of the biggest takeaways that um, I've been able to, to, to learn through the process of starting multiple different types of business in multiple different industries and different business models. Yeah, yeah, I think that's that's awesome that you were able to figure all that out, right? I've, I've told this story once or twice on the show, and shout out my mom. I hope she is or is not listening. I guess she can d decide that. But like, I learned how to drive by doing exactly what my mom did, but doing the opposite. Like, and I'm totally on. I've told her that, so I don't feel bad about saying it. But like, it's it's a hundred percent true. Like sometimes you find out what you want to do or how to do something by what not to do or how, how you shouldn't do something. And I think that's really important. And as you said, like, hey, you learn how to do sales, but I don't really feel like being in client services. It kind of sucks. Like right. people stink, right? And then I'm sure on the recruiting side of it, I'm sure there's people that kind of didn't fulfill what they were supposed to, right? And now that falls on you. And it's stuff like that that you learn over time. And most people just go company to company to do it. You kind of, you know, put your... Uh, 
put yourself on the table, if I may, and uh, you really are able to say, like, no, I'll start this. I'll start it, and I'll figure it out, and I'll learn how to do it, right? You learn how to do the f Facebook ads. You understood, ah, maybe having a physical product isn't the best thing in the world because that, that kind of gets in the way. It's, as you said, cost-intensive. So I think it's great that not only are you able to start these businesses, you have these ideas. You're able to come to terms and say, I don't like this that much. Thankfully, I learned all these things. As long as you're learning from all of them, you're able to then pull forward, as you said, and be able to do what you want to do. I think that part's uh, pretty damn important. So kudos and congratulations to you, man. I, I appreciate that. For sure. Yeah. I mean, I mean, the thing is, like, every business can work. Not every business can work for you. Yeah. Uh, and I think that understanding that distinction um, is really important when it comes to figuring out kind of what your what your thing is going to be long term. So um, any I think a lot of people kind of tinker with this, you know, as they're trying to get their uh, any type of business started. It's like, you know, they don't they, they read all the different, you know, articles of this, this person made millions of dollars doing this and they're like oh well maybe that might work for me but you're not really analyzing or being self-aware as to what you're good at what you love to do um so that that idea that business line might not work for you but in the same vein you don't know unless you try so um i've always like i said been in that experimental mode where i'm like i'm gonna dive in head first if it doesn't work pivot keep trying till you figure out what your thing is gonna be i love it man yeah kudos and congratulations to you again we only get to do this thing once you might as well enjoy it like enjoy what 100%. you do. If you wake up every day, enjoy what you do. Uh, you, you hit the jackpot, in my opinion. As long as you make enough money to sustain, you exactly. hit the jackpot. I think that's <laughs> the important part. So, uh, do you obviously want to talk about the the new business that you're rocking with, the Hype Report? It's a newsletter. It looks like it comes out every couple of weeks, and it's based around the Web three and sports intersection, which I think is an awesome, awesome place. I had uh, recently had Aaron, Evan Sheriffs on this episode to really not this episode on this podcast to talk about the FTX fallout and what that meant specifically in the world of sports. And it was a really awesome conversation. I appreciate him coming on. If you haven't listened to it, go check it out. But it was, it was just a great conversation around like, well, what actually happened? Let's get that part out of the way. And then how does this affect the Miami Heat, the MLB, you know, other companies trying to get into the space and sponsoring, right? Where's the tentativeness going to be and, and things of that nature. So I'm, I'm curious, before we dive into exactly what you're doing with the Hype Report, I, I know with Higher Shift, if I'm not mistaken, again, it was is Web3 based, correct? So you're right. working with uh, trying to get people hired uh, in Web3. And please, you, you give the definition if I got anything wrong. But what, um, where does the love of Web3 come from? And where is, is this something that you've just been interested in? Or do you see an opportunity in the space specifically? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, so when I kind of transitioned out of basketball, um, my my initial kind of next career step was in the tech space so my background i've, I've worked in tech roles um, i have a technology uh, technology background so i've kind of always had an interest um in innovation in the way technology can integrate within different industries um and as i mentioned before like during the pandemic having so much time on my hands i came across uh Web3 um, and some of those higher level concepts. And I have been an investor in crypto since about 2017. So somewhat early, not um, not one of the, the, the first adopters, but I was, you know, kind of in the space a little bit and, and had done some previous research. But during the pandemic was really when I went down that, that rabbit hole and just found it so fascinating as far as like how blockchain technology can really make so many different industries more efficient, more effective um more secure permissionless uh then you think about the creator economy and uh participants in the who, who people who put out content online having more ownership over their communities their data their ip um and then when you look at the sports landscape i think a lot of the um, underlying characteristics of web3 perfectly align with what sports is when you think about community fandom um and, and, and some of those uh kind of you know underlying traits and so I thought that was a perfect intersection. And um, that was really like my, my fascination with the space. And I thought it was so revolutionary and, and really had so much upside and, and felt like um, it was something I wanted to get in early enough to where I could provide value. I could find a niche in the space uh, because I see this really being the next phase of the internet um, and, and how things are gonna be kind of trans gonna transform over the next uh, 10 plus years. So. Um, it was really, really kind of started there for me and um, kind of the intersection with sports, just seeing how, as I said before, those those values, those characteristics line up. I think there's a ton of potential in the sports space for Web3 to kind of emerge in a lot of these these uh, concepts from Web3 to really help 
uh, with fan engagement, with athlete branding and, and things of that nature. So that's kind of how it started for me. I love it, man. I think it is really important for people to understand if there's money, it's going to find its way into sports because sports is the last really appointment television left. Like, I, I don't really care what TV shows you watch. Like, I mean, I don't watch Game of Thrones, but outside of Game of Thrones, name me three TV shows that if you're not in front of your television when it's on, you feel like you're going to miss out on the discourse. And, and the reason is because most of them are streaming anyway. Right. And uh, if they're not streaming, they'll be streaming the next day. So it's really not that big a deal anymore. If it's sports, it's live. You have to have attention. You have to keep people's attention there. And they will be there, right? We've seen, you know, the numbers are going to be coming out for the college football playoff that we just had recently. All these bowl games, even the shitty ones, two and a half million people are watching these games. It's, it's just like ridiculous in terms of what it means. And so if there's money in a space like Web3, like what we've been seeing with investors and companies and right. again bring up FTX like that's that's probably the biggest one now turns out it was all fake money I mean it was real money but it was fake money um, right. you're still going to see a significant amount of people uh, amount of these companies shift to the sports landscape because that is a place where you know you're going to get in contact with people you can you know the, the demographics of them most of the time make sense so actually let's take one step back can you give us an idea of exactly what web 3 is I feel like we throw this term out a lot but what exactly is Web three, like Web two, is kind of social media, right? Like us just putting out whatever we want onto the internet. Right. What exactly is Web three? So I, I think the simplest way to kind of understand Web three is really kind of that next phase of the internet, where uh, you know devices are connected on a decentralized network, um, as opposed to being uh, like on server based databases. So really, it's kind of incorporating blockchain technology, where you know it's this open. Uh, ledger where you can see every transaction taking place um and taking that a step further it's like what i said before like users have more control over their their ip the content the data that they um kind of put out into the into the internet into the world um and some of the benefits when you think about kind of that next phase of the internet it's um you know as i said before it's more secure um it's uh, going back to that ownership piece. So people who are participating in the internet have ownership over the things that they create. Um, it's permissionless. So with the blockchain, it could be peer-to-peer -peer transactions. Um, we don't need a, a third party like Facebook or um, you know uh, any other third party platform kind of uh, integrating within our, our transaction, our, our, uh, our connectivity, you know what I'm saying? So um, it's really kind of that overall theory, that concept, um, and really kind of how the, the internet is evolving over the next several years. So um, from a high level perspective, it can be kind of hard for people to understand what Web3 represents, but it's really kind of about, you know, giving people more control over the stuff that they put out into the internet um, and, and kind of entering the next phase where it's more peer to peer as opposed to mm -hmm. third party networks and middlemen. That's probably why Facebook's spending so much money to create their own metaverse i'm assuming because they still want control over something so uh shout out mark zuckerberg for everything that you do um so okay so we we, we understand your where the affinity for the web3 comes from what it kind of it is what it, what it is where and the the connection between sports where did the idea for the newsletter the hype report come from and where did the idea of not just hey, I want to put together something, but putting it out on a cadence, putting it out in a way that newsletters, I feel like, have like a huge resurgence all of a sudden. Like everyone <laughs> loved them. Nobody, everyone hated them. And now all of a sudden, like front office sports, just morning brew. Like now these companies are worth millions and millions of dollars because they send something to your inbox every morning. I love them all, but like it's always very interesting to kind of see the cyclical nature of things. Uh, where, so where did where did this idea come from for you to actually put this together and, and push it forward? Yeah, the things about the thing about Web three, I mean not Web three, uh, newsletters is that you're meeting people where they are. You know, everyone uses email, and if you can build trust with uh, a reader, um, you can ultimately, you know, kind of leverage that for different business models, whether that's sponsorships or things of that nature. So that's why we kind of see this insurgence of, of newsletters and high valuations when it comes to newsletter companies. Um, but for me, I've always been uh, a content creator, so to speak. That's kind of been something I've always done despite whatever business I'm involved in or creating. Um, I've always put out content, whether that was written articles or I've tried my hand in video content. I had multiple podcasts. So um, content is something, media in general is something I knew I wanted to incorporate in with whatever I did next. Um, and really the, for me, the hype report started because uh, when I was running higher shift uh, last year, as I said before, I was really burnt out with the B2B space. 
um, I wanted to stay in Web3, uh, but I wanted to get my foot back in the sports realm. And, and I was trying to figure out how I can merge sports in Web3. And as I was doing research, I, I would find content, but it'd be so scattered. Like I would see this, uh, this athlete started this NFT collection on one um, publication. And then over here, it'd be like the Miami Heat partnered with FTX. And a lot of it wasn't lining up. It was it was news all over the place. And I'm like, why isn't there a centralized uh, resource or some type of platform that really covers that niche? And it's, an, it's a niche intersection right now. But I think, as I said before, it has a lot of upside. But there, I didn't really see anybody kind of covering that in depth and detail um, and providing people who work in the sports space with uh, information, insights as to where the space is going, kind of the future of sports. And that's kind of how I like to position the hyperport is really just the future of sports in your inbox so it's really teaching people onboarding them into the web3 space uh people who work in sports and showing them like this is revolutionary this is really where the sports world is headed um and this is why you need to be educated on kind of what's happening and, and uh understand kind of how things are trending upwards so um that was really kind of the the impetus of me starting the hyperport and um, the long-term vision is to, is to really continue kind of building the readership, but also funnel that into a community um, to where people who are really interested in this space, um, who see the upside, that see the potential, um, can come together, can uh, really connect and, and kind of build off of, off of each other's ideas and, and synergize and things of that nature. Yeah, I think it, it makes sense, right? Like, what what did we see again? Front Office Sports, uh, you know, had Adam White, uh, CEO of Front Office Sports. I had him on this show. It's probably like the third or fourth episode. We're up to like three. I don't know. I think you're three thirty seven now, Malcolm. So congratulations. Um, congratulations but, to you. Hey, thanks. Buddy. I appreciate it. It's my favorite thing, man. I appreciate you giving me the time. Uh, so this is it's a three. I hope we get to three thousand uh, thirty seven one day. But no, in, in all sincerity, like seeing what they did and how how easy it seemed like they were able to grow. Now, I know it wasn't easy because I saw, like, I used to go to their, um, you know, their get-togethers back in the city, you know, a few years ago. I used to meet everybody, and it was, you know, 20, 30 people there just kind of networking, shaking hands, you know, have have a beer here or there. Like, they, they were boots on the ground for sure. That's why I respect the hell out of how, what they've grown and how they've grown it. And now they have all these incredible things and partner with amazing companies. So, Cross my fingers, you get the same thing, Malcolm. But yeah, shout, um, shout out to Adam and Russ, man. Yes. Those are good guys. I'll awesome dudes. Awesome, awesome dudes. Appreciate both of them. What um, seeing how like they were able to grow is that is that is is it as simple as and again it's not that simple, but is it as simple as kind of seeing what they did and just being like I'm just gonna kind of duplicate that in this type of space again? There there isn't really a centralized um news source, I guess you could say, or or a news aggregator, right? Like for for sports business, it was sports business journal but it's a subscription base and then there's sportico but i don't even know if that many people really know about sportico like, i have no idea like front office sports for me was like one of the first where it was like in my inbox i got the biggest stories on the sports business space and i loved it and i appreciate it and i read it literally twice a day um it's it's the absolute best uh, so is it is that kind of you know to, to for lack of a better term like just why are you recreating the wheel just kind of do what they did and, and kind of see where they came from and try and just do that same thing or is there another avenue that you can take that would almost pay homage to web three and kind of you know give your that little extra twist on it. i don't really know what i'm asking but you'll have a good answer so i'm not too worried about it <laughs> um for me yeah i mean front office sports is, is a is a great platform it, it's somebody it's a platform that i've read for years i've followed what they've done and how they've kind of pivoted to be more of a newsletter business um but i've had a, a lot of inspirations when it comes to how I'm positioning the newsletter. Um, I, I think the, the morning brew is obviously kind of the pinnacle um, and even what the hustle has done. So I think there's a lot of great examples of, of companies who have built um, really big audiences. Um, I think the biggest differentiation with kind of what I'm doing is um, one is it's it's a lot of like my opinions embedded within the, the news. So I, I kind of consider myself to be a solo creator in that aspect of whereas like I'm providing a lot of insights, but I'm also kind of giving my perspective on this partnership, this deal, this opportunity um, and really trying to build more of a, a deeper connection with my readers. Um, and I think there's very few people I've, I've, I've come across maybe one or two other newsletters who are kind of in that sports web three space. Um, but uh, there aren't many people kind of really diving deep into that, into that niche, um, that intersection right now. And so I think I'm kind of ahead of, a, ahead of the curve, um, over bigger publications like, uh, front office sports who are a little more broader when it comes to the sports business world. And even as you mentioned, like Sportico 
and things of that nature. But I've been able to kind of take inspiration from other platforms and, and what other newsletters have done. Um, but really just trying to find my lane and really focus on like that sports and Web3 intersection um, and build off of that. Um, and so that's that's really been my focus and, and kind of how I want to position the hype to be a little bit different. Um, and right now it's just once a week. And so um, going into this year, um, I, I want to, as, as the kind of the space expands, um, I want to have more uh, newsletters sent out per week. Um, but right now it's just one, one uh, newsletter uh, per week that we send out every Sunday. Um, and then just trying to grow from there um, and build more trust with the readers. I think that's the most important three thing, the, the value and the consistency over time. Yeah, I think consistency is extremely important, right? Um, but also the value that you're bringing. Yeah, I think it's interesting. It's not just the news. Hey, this is the news. That's good. We need to know that part. But you're a smart guy. You've been in the space a while, as you said. You kind of, you know, 2017 in crypto times, that's like 1900, right? Like it's, that's, <laughs> right. that's forever ago, right? Like that's, right. come on. Like that was before the first funny time that everything got crazy expensive, right? Like all those first memes, like this was like back when that guy bought the pizza hut or whatever it was, um, with, with yeah. Bitcoin. So good, good for you, man. Hopefully you made a couple <laughs> bucks, but, um, no, I think that's a really great way to kind of spin it. Right. As long personally, I hate like the hot takey, you know, I guess terrible time to bring them up, but the skip Baylesses of the world, right? Like those types of just like, uh, I'm going to just say like, I could say the most ridiculous thing. Like I just, bite my tongue because I'm not an asshole, right? Like it's pretty easy like to do that. All you do is just, what's everyone thinking? Well, I think the absolute opposite. It's like, all right, dude, thanks. If you're actually providing real value and, and real insight um, from your experiences and what you've seen and talking to Web3 companies, which you have with Higher Shift, right? And, and talking to athletes, which you have because you are one, um, you know many of them, right? And like, it's that, that interesting perspective that you come with, that background that allows that value to come through not just the news aspect of it, which was thank you for aggregating this, because I agree, I don't know where you're getting all this from or why it's not all in one place, but then actually giving some insight and some opinion, but not crappy opinion, like good, valuable opinion. I think that's really important. As you said, build that uh, relationship and give that value to the readers. You uh, hopefully gonna be, you know, knock on wood, very successful, man. I love it. That's the goal, man. And, and then even taking that a step further, it's also making it very, uh, relatable and casual to where the, uh, the reader can understand. Cause as we talked about before, like web three can be a little bit challenging when you kind of incorporate what the metaverse is and NFTs and crypto and all and tokenomics and all these different concepts that a lot of people are, don't really understand at this point in time. And so it's kind of making it simple to digest on, and, and to, to really onboard people kind of walk their hands step-by-step step as to like what this is, what does this mean? And how does this, you know, pertain to you and what you're doing in your career? So. I love it. Yeah. And uh, give that people that information. They want it, right? They're, they're, they're seeking out. I guess, where are you getting all the information from? Like where, I don't know, I don't want to spill the secret sauce or anything, but like, <laughs> where, are you just kind of scouring the internet looking for all this stuff? Do you have like a backlog of like, hey, I have three stories for this week. So, you know, I already have two for the next week. How are you kind of developing this and making sure that that consistency, which is extremely important, stays on that, uh, that, that correct cadence? Yeah. So, I mean, it is a lot of I'm just doing a lot of research throughout the week. As I said, I send it once a week and every Sunday. So throughout the week, I'm, I'm you know, doing a lot of reading, research, kind of just staying up on the industry, uh, reading other publications. Um, and then over the course of the week, kind of putting together uh, the newsletter day by day. So it is kind of scouring the web, setting up alerts um, and, and really trying to aggregate the most important stories from different sources and, and putting it in my own words for, for readers. I love it. Um, this is a business podcast, right? So I got to ask, how how are you making money, man? I'm, I'm not right now. Man. Hell yeah. More power <laughs> to you. Pre-revenue. Love to hear it. Um, uh, so the goal, I mean, right now is really, as I said before, to build that trust. Um, and, and that's just through consistency and value. Um, and uh, I've so this is the third month, third or fourth month that uh, I've been doing the newsletter. So it's still very early. Um, but the goal this year is to monetize through uh, sponsorships um, for the newsletter. So um, I don't have a specific um, kind of subscriber uh, point where I'm trying to actually pursue those opportunities. But um, somewhere along the lines, I'm going to try to monetize it this year, um, but currently not making any money. So uh, that is that is on the goal list. <laughs> hey man, got to start somewhere, right? And that's exactly. the, that's that's the true sign of an entrepreneur. You're willing. You had this business. You didn't really like it too much, or maybe you didn't like it too much. You didn't like certain aspects of it, and now you're willing to say, "I want to start something new." It's important to you, right? It, it, can, it combines a couple different areas of that that you thoroughly enjoy in Web three and sports. 
but also it's it's a great idea, right? As you said, there's there's other publications that are being very much more broad in the sports business space, such as Front Office Sports. Let's plug them again. Sports Business Journal, Sportico, uh, right? There's influencers in the space, and then there's you were, you know, if you're everything to everyone, you're nothing to nobody, right? So you're being very specific. You're being, you're picking your lane and you're going to own that lane, right? You're going to be the front office sports of the, the Web3 sports intersection newsletter space. And hey, you know what? Throwing it out there. What if front office sports gives you a bunch of money one day? Just come do it for us. I, I, they're cool dudes. Know. You might as well say yes, but <laughs> we'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to that later. Uh, I'm sure you don't need an introduction to those guys either, so we're good there. But, man, this is uh, kudos and congratulations to you, Malcolm. This is awesome. You. Always appreciate you having, having you come on. Um, I f- think I forgot also multi multiple-time author. Let's let's not forget that, right? You wrote a couple books. Yeah. You, you talked about content creation. I was like, oh, shit, yeah, he wrote, like, books too. So I'll put the books in the show notes. Um, where can everybody find more about you? Where can they find more about the hype report, everything that you guys are doing yeah um appreciate the opportunity man it's always course, great to dude. talk to you um I'm, I'm probably most active on linkedin i'm on every social media platform at malcolm lemons but most active on linkedin um and you can sign up for the hype report at the hype report.beehive.com i know that's lengthy um trying to trying to nail down that uh that url that domain name this year um but uh that you know appreciate anybody subscribing would love feedback on the newsletter or you know ways that i can support or provide more value is always welcome so uh, yeah, that's that's where that's where it is. I appreciate it, man. I expect to have you on many more times throughout the uh, the life of this show. Don't you worry, man. So uh, maybe maybe we'll, we'll figure something out after the show. But I think we have some couple couple ideas we can cook with. But more importantly, thank you again for your time. Thank the audience for their time. This is the only thing that we don't get more of. So appreciate you for that. Uh, please follow me wherever. Subscribe. We already did all that BS. Uh, more importantly, go check out Malcolm and what he's doing. Malcolm Lemons, really appreciate your time today, man. Thank you so much. My God, thank you. Appreciate it.